And I realized immediately as I was reading this that this is this is the this is the work of an inferior being. This is the work of ignorant, bigoted, superstitious primitives. Hello, I'm Chris Mallard, the Daily Atheist, and you are watching The Atheist Edge. Then why is the book wrong about everything? Why is it that nowhere in the Bible does it ever say anything that common men of that time didn't know? And, and worse than that, it, gives, it, it reflects the false beliefs that common men at that time had. The Bible says that the earth is flat, that it has a giant crystal dome over it. That was a common belief throughout, throughout Asia at the time, all the way into the Orient. India, China, Persia, they all held this belief. It's wrong, but they all had this belief. And so that, that's what the Bible describes. It thinks that the sun and the moon are both the same size, only because they appear the same size. It's written from the perspective of somebody who doesn't know anything about space, who's standing on this planet going, I think it's like this, who says the sun and the moon are the same size and that they are both bigger, both bigger than all the stars. I think it was actually 22 countries in the mm -hmm. last, say, three years that I've been doing this full time. I, and it's been on, uh, you know, I think, 15 countries in Europe, and then of course Canada, and then uh, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, Dubai, and India, Oman, and uh, uh, Qatar. It, it's been crazy. Okay, yeah, I don't want to be in the same room with Frank. It's Turek. a different address, but yeah, Frank Turek will be here. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> it did not go well the last time he and I were in the same room. Was he a Christian type? Yeah, uh, and he, he, he published the book, uh, yeah, don't, Not Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. You know, and so, right, the, the title of the book is, what is it, is it projection or is it strong? I guess it's projection, false equivalence, which, name your fallacy, because it depends on a lot of them. It's a straw man, I think, because we don't have faith. Faith is a He did this story. argument where he showed how all of these other stars are bigger than our sun, and he shows how... He, you know, you get up to Beetlejuice, get up to two or three things beyond Beetlejuice to the point where you, when you do the comparison, you can't even see our sun anymore. It's so small compared to everything else. And then he turns to the audience and says, see, this is proof there's a God. <laughs> so somehow, Man. C falls between B and D. That's proof there's a God. This, <laughs> this is the kind of logic they have. Wednesday follows Tuesday. Proof there's a God. <laughs> do the Bible that. doesn't express wisdom. It does, everything the Bible says about the earth in, the rel in relation to the rest of the cosmos is absolutely wrong. The Bible doesn't describe science, nor does it praise science, nor does it praise wisdom. The Bible thinks wisdom is believing the idiocy that you're told without question. No, that is not wisdom. That's why the Bible and the Quran both give the opposite definition of a fool than what a fool would be like in common parlance. Like, I mean, a fool is one who too readily accepts improbable claims from questionable sources on insufficient evidence. The Bible says that a fool is anybody who does, who, who, who doesn't accept improbable claims from... <laughs> there are two time zones that I haven't been to yet. And, one, and seriously, that's, all, that's it. Uh, one of them is uh, Thailand and the other one is Bangladesh. And I have to tell you, to be honest, I'm actually tempted to go to Bangladesh just to announce that I'm going to be there and announce where I'm going to be. Ooh. See what happens, right? And just, Yeah. Because, I mean, somebody has to. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody has to call this shit out. Because one thing, that, you know, the thing about terrorism is it only works when you're afraid. And when you have to live in one of these countries yeah. and you can't speak out. You know, I have, a, I have the greatest empathy for these people. Um, I'm, I'm so fortunate that, I, that I'm not in this situation. I mean, I, I tell a lot of people that, I, that when I went to Dubai, uh, it is a Sharia state, although it's the most progressive. It's like, you know, Las Vegas dipped in glitter on Arabic uh, dime. They cater to Americans there too. So. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's still a Sharia state. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in a public restaurant and I'm at a table full of Arabs, all wearing the dish dash of kofiya and all this. And they'd never met an atheist before. So, I mean, a handful of these people are sitting there asking me questions and saying the, 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 the standard apologetics you always hear. And so I remember saying to one of these guys, you know, okay, look, here's five reasons that we know that the Quran is wrong. Yeah. Turns For out... starters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> turns out it's illegal to say the Quran is wrong. So I, I was not able to get through my list... What happened? My host grabbed me by the shoulder and said, we got to go. Because I just said in a public restaurant that the Quran is wrong. Exactly. In the 2016 election, 
I mean, I was looking at you know, a, a, a clown car full of incompetence on the GOP side, and then I was looking at uh, basically corporatists, and I'm not sure what the alternate category was, but there was there were some people that seemed to be beholden to corporations and big profits and everything, and other people who were more you know aligned toward socialism. And I, st I still say I don't identify with socialism. But I understand that we should have a balance between capitalism and socialism because runaway capitalism is every bit as bad and probably worse than runaway socialism. And my issue was uh, always about uh, the environment and everything, and so that I didn't understand why in in uh, in in when when George H. W. Bush was running, why the environment was not a key issue then, way back then. But in 2016, my favorite candidate was Bernie. And there were a handful of things that Bernie said that I wanted to have a couple of minutes to talk to Bernie about to correct him because there's no perfect candidate. Yeah, you know, and 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 I didn't. And a lot of people were accusing if if you vote for Bernie, if you then you're a Bernie bro and you you worship Bernie. And no, Bernie's wrong about a handful of things. And I would love to have a moment to point out <laughs> what he's wrong about. Yeah. You know, there's a certain amount of decorum, but what it does mean is that you, is that you have free thought. I mean, like for example, in the Sharia states in 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 Dubai, even even in Dubai, they have a racist legal system where foreigners can come in and drink alcohol and and do as they will and dress how they will, you know. But Arabs, you know, different standard. Mm -hmm. If you're Arab, you oh, have yeah. to believe, right? In Islam, you can't question it. It's you're four years in prison. If you say, you know what, I don't think this is true, and you're Arab, gone. That's that's what the First Amendment means. That means you can you can have independent, free thought, and that you can express those opinions without being sent to jail for it. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think John the Baptist was real. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, I think John the Baptist was was both real and a and one of a handful of inspirations for Jesus. And that the storytellers, because that's what all this is, the storytellers wanted to uh, take over the popularity of John the Baptist, and so they have to write a story where John the Baptist then bequeaths all of his power over to Jesus, so now the readers have the authority of John the Baptist transferred into their new character, Jesus, which the, the, the Muslims did the same thing. I mean, there was, there was a the Persian story where there's a Persian who, uh, Zoroastrian who converts to, to Islam, and he goes to meet Jesus, who still exists and was and was in their uh, theology, never crucified or killed. So Jesus still exists, and he comes out of his house every day and heals people because Jesus has this power because he's a prophet of God. And this Persian comes to Jesus because he wants to know the truth of God, and Jesus says, well, I am not the one to tell you. You need to go to Muhammad. So now they've, they've appropriated Jesus to refer Christians to Muhammad. And this, the, that same kind of that same tactic, the same strategy is being used where they kind of, they write an additional story for John the Baptist so that he appropriates his power into this new character, Jesus. The only way to call, to call out terrorism to not be afraid. is to not be afraid of it. Right on. And I am sick to death of Americans, and I'm sorry that I'm going to say this, but I'm sorry, this is something that boils in me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick to death of Americans who sing that stupid fucking song about how this is the land of the free and the home of the brave, yet we have given up all of our freedoms out of fucking fear. You're preaching to the choir, my man. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is racism and or sexism systemic and institutional? Yes. Yeah. Name the institution or the system that makes it so. Current American society, is it not just American is it society. Codified in written legal language. Yes. Is it expressly codified? No. Yes, but Go. subtly. <laughs> yes, but it's subtly. And so you, you, you have to look at, at at precedent. So, um, both racism and sexism are system. We we know, for example, that the reason that that marijuana was criminalized 
was not anything against marijuana in particular. It was because that meant that we could jail more blacks and Hispanics. Exactly. You're just supposed to believe what you're told because I said so and for no other reason, no matter how ridiculous it is. Otherwise, you're a fool. The Bible gets it completely backward, and the Quran, is, the Quran does as well. So the Christians will all tell me that I'm using the wrong definition of faith, but I'm using the same definition of faith that is throughout the Bible, in every reference the Bible makes to faith, as well as the, the sermons of theologians past and present, and all, of course, dictionaries as well, and also uh, extra-biblical scriptures like the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita, for example. Let's so think about this for a moment. You know, a buddy of mine was working for Uber doing the, the self-driving car, so he's paid to not drive a car. Sweet. He just sits in the car and it drives. But he, he's not allowed to touch his cell phone. If you touch your cell phone, you're fired. Right, so he has to sit there and he has to mind the road. He can't be looking away from the road. He has to be minding the road as if he's driving. And he's being monitored. There's, a call, there's cameras all around the car. And he's, but he's in an automated car and it is an Uber. So he's picking up passengers and, and not driving them around. And there was this accident that was on his team, this friend of mine, his team, uh, where the car had plenty of time to see this woman and stop, but didn't, and hit her and killed her. Had that event not happened, the testing by now would have been complete and it would have been successful if that fatality had not occurred. This would have caused Uber to fire all of its Uber drivers and Lyft, fire all of theirs, and taxis around the world would all go away. Uh, and everybody would have either automated cars or they'd be, they'd be taking Uber or Lyft or whatever, and there'd be nobody in the car. So when you have to get a drunk ride home, you're the only one in the car, but you're, you're still, you can't be held, you know, driving drunk. As a matter of fact, if you have your own automated car, you can prove that the car was driving and not you, and you can still go home drunk. But what the, the result of this, and they've already had an automated truck deliver an order of Budweiser for whatever reason, because like Budweiser wanted to be in, get their name in history somewhere, where an automated truck delivered this order of Budweiser. It's driving by itself. And now what happens if the taxis, Uber, Lyft, all of these driving companies, the, the, the trucking industry goes automated? That's the biggest industry we have. Yeah. If you automate that, it would be impossible to tell people to go get a job. There won't be jobs to get. And do we allow people to starve because unemployment is impossible? Do we give them limited uh, benefits for unemployment and then they're just out? We would have to. I, know, I don't identify as a socialist, but there's some point where you have this level of automation taking away this many jobs. You're either going to have to be a full-on socialist state or you're going to have to reduce the automation and, and nobody's going to do that because it's cheaper. So everything we do wrong is because it's cheaper and makes us a profit. Jesus is only interested in washing his feet and using somebody else's hair to do it. As if that makes any fucking sense. Okay, so Jesus turns water into wine and he does it in the pen and Teller way. Of, you know, like you, you, you pour water into the jug and then you pour, turn the jug upside down and it pours wine out. You know, we saw Penn and Teller do this. But this is based on Dionysus. Dionysus' miracle where he had the springs of the earth bring forth wine. That's a much better trick. And Penn and Teller couldn't do that one. So every miracle that is attributed to Jesus is actually attributed to somebody else prior, centuries prior. And this is one of the great examples of that. So I don't understand why, why this is even cited. I mean, even the bit about you know, Jesus walking on water, did you know that Indra had already done that? In Indian theology, centuries before, is there anything about Christian Christian belief that is original, that hadn't already written been written in some other religion prior to that? You would think. You know, I was I was hanging out with a with a high priest of Forge Coven in San Antonio, who's a, a Wiccan group, and then I'm, I'm, he says his patron deity is Dionysus, and he tells me all this story, and I'm thinking, you know what? I don't think that God would make Jesus as a sequel to an already popular human idea. It seems to me that either Dionysus could make wine just like Jesus did, or, more reasonably, Jesus couldn't do it either. Yeah, so I, consequently, I've never been able to enjoy, enjoy marijuana. It could be legal everywhere, and I wouldn't be doing it. Okay, so just, just to clarify where I'm coming from mm -hmm. on that. It has nothing to do with my personal interests or what I want, but the data is in. 
if you legalize marijuana everywhere that they've done it, whether it was in Oregon, where example, they, they brought in so much revenue that they had a tax-free day for their citizenry yeah, because they had so much extra money. And, and in Colorado, where they recently announced that they had a hundred, and you know, how sparsely populated is Colorado, and yet Compared they still here, managed yeah. to raise a hundred and ten million dollars on the revenue of, of marijuana. One hundred and ten million. A hundred and ten. That's higher than that, even. But. Well, let's. Uh, but it's a hundred and ten yeah. million on a sparsely populated state for education infrastructure. And uh, yeah, that's where that that's where they apply the money, yeah. right? They apply it to sensible things like increasing education, which is the one thing that America. Should, you know, and I have to tell you again, again, you know, complaining about America because um, the solution to so many of America's problems is that we need to do the exact opposite of everything the GOP wants to do. If you want to you want to you want to uh, emasculate or, or or take the power away from the, the the Mexican drug cartels, you legalize marijuana. You don't build a wall. And if you build a wall, then you are emulating Gorbachev, right? Mr. Gorbachev build up that wall, but do yep. it in Texas, right? You won't be stopping people from coming in because you've taken away everything that gave the United States a higher quality of living than anywhere else. And that's what made America great. You want to make America great again? Bring back our standard of living. Because that's what did it. I've known people who were raised in the Soviet Union, who identified as communists, and they said what won the Cold War was not our superior military technology. They don't think we have ever had superior military technology. What won was color TV. <laughs> because they think, you know, live, growing up in a communist country, the they make sacrifices for the common good. And yet they see American television, because American television goes everywhere. Yep. So every, in every country, they see that Americans were living better than they were. And that's what wins. But when you take away our Medicare, and you take away our Medicaid, and you take away Social Security, and you illegalize everything, right? And then you deprive every aspect of what made it good to be an American. You put up a wall, you're not going to be keeping people out, you're going to be keeping people in. Well, as, as, as I said, the reason that I come to this conclusion is because people have made videos expressing that back in the day this was the reason that they advocated this position. What percentage of voters is that? I'm not even talking about the percentage of voters, I'm talking okay. about the legislators okay. that had backed these positions was because, you know, the, the primary goal of I, you know, uh, I, I, I wish I could come up with names because now I can't justify my case completely if I don't have all the names for it. Well, it's, but it's not even that. It's and, until like if somebody, let's say somebody with really bad motivations create created a law, that law still has to be endorsed and passed by a number of other people. And until you get to the point where you can make a case that the majority of people advocating for something were had the same motivations, I think it's a mistake to say that that was the motivation for it. Bearing on this, I mean, in in the state of California, the, there was a there was a vote by 200 legislators uh, that that they passed a law. 200 legislators passed a law that it was illegal to hire a China man. How the fuck do you get 200 legislators who not who don't realize how unconstitutional that is? Right, I mean that, that's that's the first problem, and a lot of the other contentions that I'm having is because I I because I I had to interview Hector Garcia. I had to read two of his books, Alpha God, and Sex, P Power, and Politics. Yep. Both of which illustrate rather eloquently. He's a either either book, per, preferably Alpha God. I think was the the more moving of the two for me, for some of the subtleties that we overlook or that we don't we're not even aware of. With our hundred million dollar arms deals, nothing says peace like a hundred million dollar arms deal with the people who fund terrorism. Why the hell? Oh, you have oil, so we're gonna suck your dick because you have oil? Is that really what this has come to? This is what our country is? There is better ways. China is becoming one of the leaders in alternative green energies. They are investing hugely in wind power and solar generators and tidal 40 generators. Forty times more progress than we're making right now. It's, and there are yeah. hundreds of, I mean, hundreds of thousands of jobs. Right? They're actually creating jobs by doing this. And what are we doing? Certain we are bowing to audiences. Exactly. And we are and and we are selling out for to to, to pay more for the military because. You know, we couldn't elect, and everybody that knows me will know that I am not a Hillary advocate. Mm -hmm. I'm the furthest fucking I. thing <laughs> from a Hillary advocate. Well, I, I, I wouldn't even do it myself. 
I will have yeah. my, my zealots. Minions go yeah. smite them. Because why is it that God needs other people? Why, why does it God need people to do his work? So God gives very specific instructions. on. So if we, you know, like a, two, a page or two earlier, and said, Thou shalt not kill. And then Moses comes down the mountain with that commandment and, said, and sees that his brother has built a golden calf. Then the, the commandment becomes, Kill every man and his brother. Well, whose brother built the golden calf? That was Moses' brother, Aaron. But in the next page, did Aaron get killed? Like I said, it, no. He, you know, suddenly Aaron is a priest. And Aaron also has these detailed descriptions in the Bible, as if we need them now, to describe how many jewels you know, and what kind of precious metals are to be, you know, sewn into his raiment for his... his so uh, help you if you have six jewels instead of seven jewels. So we need, we need God to give specific instructions on how we are supposed to, you know, bequeath the priestly with this finament, or this finery, and how we are supposed to build the tabernacle, because God can't build a fucking tabernacle, right? And, and God can't build a boat or a box or a building. No, God can't do anything... I mean, God can make dinosaurs and planets and everything that humans can't make, but he can't make anything humans can make. Or an ark. Because those things can't, that's a box. So those things can't appear by themselves, so people have to make them, almost as if God didn't exist. We wouldn't be in this situation if we had elected her instead of Trump. No, this is not the best option. The best option was shut down by the DNC. Uh, yeah. Do you think he even had a chance? He not only had a chance, he's all the most, in he is right them? now the most popular politician in American history. Oof. So yeah. We'd be far better off with him. I'm he, just going to say that. I'm going to go on the record to say that. Well, we that. couldn't elect a guy who identified as a socialist who wanted yeah, everybody see, to have yeah. free health care and free education because those are too radical, right? So instead... You've been to Germany. I mean, uh, you've been to Europe. Yes. I lived in Germany for three years. You know how it can work. And I know that it does work. Yes. You know, so I mean, yeah. So we've seen how how Trump has done. What well, he handed over a whole bunch of money to a company to make them stay in the United States. He didn't have to hand them over any money. If he was any good as a negotiator, he wouldn't have handed them over a dime. But he handed over all this money to keep their factory in the United States. It's fully automated. What's the point of having a factory that's fully automated in the United States? You're not providing any jobs. Uh, and by the way, I want to say, since we're both on camera, that I was interviewed by somebody advocating who, who claimed to be a former atheist who became a Catholic. And I said, even if you were born Catholic and raised Catholic, how the fuck could you still be Catholic now, much less be an atheist to begin with and become a Catholic now? I mean, how the fuck do you justify that position? But I, I, he, he got the impression, I don't know how he got this impression, but that I was, he, that I was insulting his intelligence. And so he asked me to name somebody that I thought was more intelligent than myself. And I said, I have friends that I think are more intelligent than myself. And the name that he forced me to drop, of course, was yours. Oh, well, thanks, but you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as long as you think I'm smarter, you just have to take my word for it that you're wrong and now you're smart. <laughs> because I don't think that we should be chopping off force. Because one of my, my favorite gospel is the gospel of Thomas from the Coptic Gospels wherein the disciples asked Jesus what he thought about circumcision. And Jesus' answer, and this is the only time where I've ever found the you know, words of wisdom coming from Jesus, and it's in a gospel that didn't even make canon, is where Jesus said, if God meant, us for be, meant for us to be circumcised, we wouldn't be born with foreskins. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, <laughs> to us, Thomas is, the, Thomas is the one disciple we can probably as atheists identify with the most because he exactly he needed some evidence right uh, with voter apathy what would you what could you do to maybe drum up our, our voters on our side at the time that this the, 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 what I'm about to tell you at the time that this happened uh, I was representing a 501c3 and I couldn't do anything about it myself but we went to uh, the town of Rowlett to their city council mm -hmm. and they wanted to to uh, stop the invocation, you know, this religious invocation before they do any city government business. And all these people, I mean, dozens of people have shown up to give very passionate testimony, some of them tearful. And there's a small riser around uh, the, the banks where the, the people are sitting, that are the, the town council is listening to this. And you can't see that they're all holding iPads and stuff like that. But people had screenshotted what they were saying on Facebook.
Uh-huh. So while they're uh-huh. listening to very passionate testimonies about why we shouldn't be doing this, why we should be considering all these other things, the city council was saying, fuck these people, we're going to do what we want to do. Right? And so people are screenshotting that. And I said, if you want to get rid of the mayor, if you want to get rid of the city council, the way to do that is to go down to the unemployment line in Rowlett, Texas, and grab somebody who has a residence in that city and say, hey, you want to be the new mayor? Because only 11% of Rowlett turned out to vote in their mayoral election. What's average? That's way below average. It is, but that's typical for that area. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, so you grab somebody from the unemployment line, and we back him, and we get all the publicity necessary for that guy. Now, I wasn't just saying we grab an atheist. Grab a Christian so he's not controversial. Right. Right, but you know, just, just grab somebody that needs a job. Would you like to be the new mayor? Oh shit! You know, and I couldn't personally advocate it for it because I was re- I was representing a couple of five hundred one c three. You know, to add, and so there, there, there's restrictions on that. Uh, yeah, that's what? another thing about scripture. Why the fuck does it matter? Do you realize that most of the Bible has stories in it that are that don't pertain to anything fuck all i mean they don't give not only do they not give us any practical knowledge like you know what, what reason why you wash your hands wouldn't it be nice to know about viruses or bacteria or or or, or um you know and, and contaminants or any of the other reasons why why we wash our hands why the purification of water purification of food any of that wouldn't it be nice to have some practical value information but we don't get that in the bible yeah. well, where, where's the germ theory gospel where's <laughs> We get ritual traditions that make no fucking sense. And then we get the Ten Commandments erased and then replaced by a completely different Ten Commandments where everything is keeping the Feast of the Leavened Bread and keeping the Feast of Weeks and all that and don't boil a baby goat in his own mother's milk and all that shit. None of this has any practical value or use. It's all just ceremonial traditions. And why is God so terribly afraid that we will believe in other gods? If you were God and there was one God and it's you, would it matter? Wouldn't you rather that people like have some understanding of the real world? You wouldn't care about their religion, right? You certainly wouldn't damn people over what they believe. If they behave in a godly way, meaning that they that they smite their their you know associated villages and they uh, for worshiping other gods and they kill every man and his brother and and, and they, they hamstring all the horses and, and you know, kill all the old people, burn the village to the ground, take all their booty, and oh, by the way, take their children, murder all the little boys, but keep the preteen girls, and it, yes, it specifies preteen girls, and keep those for your sex slaves. If you get behave in a godly way, wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, if you're a god, if you're going to judge anything at all, wouldn't it be that kind of behavior that would piss you off? I, I wouldn't give a shit what they believe. I would rather that they know things. And so my book, my Bible, would be completely different than the Bible that is written. It would actually have practical information that is of value and use. But you see, what's happening is if you, everything goes automated, it's not possible for these people to have jobs anymore. We're going to have to completely reconsider the entire structure that the United States economy is based on. And as much fear as people put into the word socialism... That's the only answer. And I'm not saying that as a socialist. I'm, I'm neither would I describe myself as, as a capitalist, because you know why I don't like to identify as a capitalist? Because I don't like lies. And if somebody holds up a, a sign that says free pizza and it's underlined, and then when I get really close, What's the catch? I get really close to that sign and I realize that that's not an underline, that's just really fine print with any regular purchase of two, two full price pizzas. I'm being lied to. Why did you price that at... Four ninety nine instead of five bucks. Good. Are you trying to fool me? <laughs> I did vote, just like run down the D's the last time I voted. And but the reason that I did was because in in twenty years of anti theist activism, yeah, I have seen that the GOP is habitually responsible for the worst possible legislation. If it's if it's if it's racist, if it's if it's designed only to deprive a particular group of their rights, of course it was a Republican who wrote it. It's never an option. Right? So it I did or, run or Joe Lieberman. <laughs> So I did actually run with maybe an exception or two for, for particular candidates that I was aware of. Uh, I did run down the D's because in the last 20 years of my activism and advocacy, I've seen I've seen the most horrible things that are promoted by Republicans to, to where they 
I have this waxed mustache, but I mean, they actually twirl it. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Snidely> whiplash. <laughs> well, people are going to have questions about my politics since I am running for public office, and a lot. Of, one of the first assumptions that people make is if just simply being atheist means I'm somehow a socialist or a communist or something like that. And that I, and that You're going to get that. It's Texas. Yeah, if I suggest that the, that the government has any minimal responsibility for its citizenry, then I somehow love the state. But in point of fact, I actually want less government than the people in Texas who are advocating less government. Because the people who are advocating less government want government that mandates or monitors everything you do in your bedroom. They want to control every aspect of your life. I don't. You know, I think that the, 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 the U.S. government should be responsible for a handful of things and not so much of those things. Defense is one thing we all agree on. The United States collectively, we would not privatize a defense company in a case of war, right? You no. know, this is something the government needs to do itself. But 25 do times higher in defense spending than all, what the, the next 10 countries combined? And that's what we start with. I was so then, a Marine for 21 years, and I'm still saying this. So then Trump Our defense wants spending to is out cut. Of control. Trump wants to cut every benefit for your mother, right? Disabilities, Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, uh, anything that would have aided uh, unwed teen pregnancies while refusing to teach sex education, while refusing to provide either abortions or birth control, so it would have created this positive feedback loop, which creates a negative effect. Which, produce, which is why Texas has uh, the, the most repeat teen pregnancies of any state in the country. Repeat teen pregnancies. Is, because is they, it the most? Yeah, the, the, they haven't I learned the lesson after there. the first time. Uh -huh. So they're, 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 they're pregnant again when they're, still, teen, teen pregnancies. when they're still yeah. teenagers. I know Mississippi's down there too, but I didn't know we were Mississippi. Yeah, you know what the purpose of Mississippi is? is to give us, <laughs> Here we is, go. <laughs> is to give Texas somebody they can look down on. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, because we're so close to the bottom, there aren't that many options. You don't have to be significantly older, though, really, in the story. So you have you have the, the more popular guy, and then you have the new usurper that the new cult wants to to supplant. Old their and guy. busted, new hotness. But it's, yeah, <laughs> sorry, it, 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 it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I mean, you can have people who are contemporary in age. Mm -hmm. You know, the one is the more popular, and then you just bequeath that popularity over, and okay, your your story is done, now we can go have you beheaded, or whatever the fuck happened to him. And then all of that popularity goes to Jesus. And, and it reminds me of like, okay, so what happened to John the Baptist? Okay, well, he gets killed, and so his his followers want to want to pretend that their guy didn't really die. It's like, like the, the Elvis worshipers. They want to believe that Elvis is working in a 7-Eleven somewhere, you know, that he's still alive. Same thing happens with all these believers when they have their, their little cult leader and the cult leader dies and they don't want to accept that he's dead. Well, now they, you have the Jesus cult that follows the, the, um, the previous cult, the John the Baptist cult, and now they, they, want, they, they want to bequeath their power over in there and then Jesus cult leader dies and now they have to deify him because that's what people do. Right, we will start saying, oh, you know, that guy, the guy that was just killed in this car wreck, well, he was the greatest guy. Well, you might have hated him yesterday before you knew he was in a car wreck, and now he's okay. Mm. You know, now, now, he, you know, now you have respect for him for whatever fucking reason, just because he's dead. But if you you've believed in him already, well, now you can't accept that he's dead. Especially not if the character that, you, that you're, you're talking about was not initially even really a single real guy. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you hint at mythicism, then everybody scoffs. Well, you're not you're not a scholar because every historian that was raised Christian never questions the belief they were raised with. Well, of course, they didn't. I mean, I, I when I read the Bible the first time, or I actually I'll, I'll be honest when I say I started to read the Bible the first time at 12 years old. I barely got out of Genesis as I remember before I threw the thing across the room in disgust. Because How old were you? I was 12. 12? Oh, okay. this, I, mean, I was taught that you know this is the word of God, and God is love, and God is wisdom, and all like this. So if I read this, I'm going to get a level of morality and wisdom that is far beyond any human author. And I realized immediately as I was reading this that this is, this is, the, this is the work of an inferior being. This is the work of ignorant, bigoted, superstitious primitives. And I've had a number of people challenging me just in the last month, and I've had to tell them over and over again just exactly what Matt said, that it doesn't matter who the person is. 
Uh, it, it doesn't matter if he's if he's the, the the bottom rung or if he's the most intimidating warrior you have. Does, it really doesn't make any difference. What is the, the point is, what are we debating? What's the topic? And if it's a good subject, then we'll run with that. And fortunately, when I've allowed the believer to name their own topic, they come up with much better ideas than I do. And I'm doing a debate on the 30th uh, in Waco. I don't know who my opponent is. It doesn't matter. I, I just know what the subject is. That's true. Um, I made a video about Pence during the primary wherein I called him out for wanting to, to promote the belief. He wants to promote the belief in Noah's flood, and he wants to teach evolution as just a theory, not a fact, which is a deliberately dishonest, open misrepresentation. He knows what theory really means, and he wants to teach it as a guess so that he can, he can promote this mythical belief in magic right this is wholly dishonest and it's unrealistic and, and we are beholden to the oil companies so much that we have to deny climate change as well as evolution on top of everything mm -hmm. else so we're not allowed to teach anybody real science our children are not supposed to understand things so this is why every other country is passing us by. And the other thing that irritates the hell out of me was when people like, you know, my dear beloved father, when he said, this is the best damn country there is. Well, maybe once upon a time, but you know what? It hasn't been for a long time. Because if you look at any particular metric, I don't know what one metric would point to the United States being the best. We're number 37th in science standards, you know, we're... we're, we're I think the best we rank in anything is like number seven in some other metric, you know. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is passing us by. It's like the tortoise and the hare, you know. And we're having this wet dream about how great we are as we sleep on the side of the road, and everybody, all these other tortoises are passing us now. But I have to admit that although I never thought so until recently, you know, reevaluation of my prior positions and and the way that I used to used to think, I had to realize that yes, there was a time when I was sexist. Right. And being aware of that, I think, is, is, is uh, the, you know, the best road to recovery, I guess. This is an ultimatum. You either show that the, 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 the way the Bible describes you is not you, that they got you wrong, right? Or you come up with some justification for this horrible atrocities that are attributed in your name. And the, the, the justification of that is, it, or the, the, the challenge So you'd hold them accountable. Yeah. Is it, if he did neither of these things... He could not have my soul, and I fully understood at 12, still believing in hell, that that meant that I would go to hell. But then going to hell seemed preferable than having to kiss the ass of this intolerant, indomitable despot. <laughs> Which would be fun. What do you mean? No. I can't, I can't oh, remember a time that you and yeah. I have okay. massively disagreed on an, an issue. We've had disagreements, don't, don't but it's never this. been an issue. It's one of the reasons why we're still friends. <laughs> You know, how could you spend an eternity with something like that that can read your mind and is constantly judging you? I mean, who wouldn't kill themselves just to get out of a bad marriage, much less a telepath? Amen, brother. <laughs> Shout it from the rooftop. <laughs> constantly scrutinizing you all the time. I had a debate with a Christian last night where I had to explain to this guy, like, look, for 20 years I've been having the exact same conversation over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I say that according to every scriptural reference in the Bible, and not just the Bible, but the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita, they all describe faith the same way. They all describe faith the way that I describe it. But every Christian says that faith is not a belief that is not based on evidence. Every Christian says that their faith is based on evidence. Okay, what is your evidence? Nobody produces anything. What they do is, okay, they do the circular argument of question begging, right? That I have, that my magic book of fables says it's right, and we know that it's right because my magic book of fables says so. So the magic book of fables is evidence of the magic book of fables. Right, there we go. We have subjective impressions. We have changed lives, which affects every religion and every every paranoid conspiracy theorist if you think that that, that aliens are giving telepathic transmissions that are being impeding through your uh, or, or or transmitting through your tinfoil helmet okay you get the same experience as all these religious people do and so there's no control group you get the same effect for every religion and every other and, and past life remembrance and, and you think you're talking to your dead relatives all of that you can get a hobby or join a new political group and you get the same effect from all of those who so clearly that is not evidence of of the truth of the faith but then the, the christians always want to argue that it is mm -hmm. but it never comes down to scientific evidence 
They always want to, they'll, they'll either use the excuse that, well, God is a metaphysical argument, and that's the excuse we use for why we don't have anything to back up our bald-ass fucking claims, or they'll say that they have scientific evidence, but that doesn't meet the definition of sci that any scientist would use. For example, this guy last night told me that I'm just wrong about science, and then he starts quoting the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which also gives a definition of, of, this, of what scientific evidence means, has three tri criteria, and he meant none of them. So, fuck, no, you're done. It's the same conversation all the time. You tell me I'm wrong, then prove that I'm right. But you never admit that I'm right, but you prove that I'm right, and then you're too stupid or, 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 or arrogant to admit, because how can you? You're, in, you're totally invested in this make-believe system, and that's what faith is. Fucking make-believe. You're pretending to have a magic imaginary friend. We're done. That's it. It's not like having an imaginary friend. It exactly is having a magic imaginary friend. Three years ago was awful. Yeah. That was so bad. Now, one of the, the, the candidates that I really like uh, is Ocasio-Cortez. I really do. And Wait, I, is I, she in the running for president? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. You said <laughs> candidates, and I was like, no friggin' way. Yeah, yeah but understand. Um, I don't look at the president at being as, as being a person of power to administrate over everything else to the degree that other people think that, that they are. We need, obviously, a body in the house. We need a body in the sentence. We, we, we need people who make wise decisions and vote in, intelligently. And here in Texas, especially, we don't have that. So, so I like that... that I like that she comes up with this idea that Fox News says is absolutely impossible and that every other presidential candidate says, you know what, that's a good idea. It is completely pushing the Overton window, but you know what, we're talking about the, 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 the continuation of our species, and not just ours, a lot of others as well. So, you know, some consideration must, some consideration must be made for the larger spectrum. And our current leadership, obviously, is not in tune with that. Now, in my current situation, as you mentioned, um, Bob Hall won his primary against another Republican because the, for the last three elections, the Republicans have held with no Democratic opponent. And I have to identify as a Democrat in this election because I need the advantage of the down ballot. Do I believe in the party, uh, two-party system? No, I don't. Well, would I normally have identified as a, as a Democrat? No, I wouldn't have, for, for different reasons. But in, the, in that primary, uh, Bob Hall, I can't remember the previous guy, uh, and Sessions, I think? But anyway, oh, I, I, they had, uh, they, in their primary election, Bob Hall was criticized by the incumbent who said that Hall had not paid his taxes. And Hall's response, his rebuttal to that, said nothing about whether he paid his taxes or not. Instead, he had criticized his opponent of being inspired by Satan. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. So we live in a time when right-wing conservative Christian dominionists can accuse each other of witchcraft. It's true. What are they going to do with me? Our, our last governor filled up a stadium in Houston to pray for rain. I mean, it, it trickles down from there. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah, and then they wanted, even that, they wanted to make sure that there was no way of, of, of verifying whether it had failed. Right, so he said, don't necessarily pray for rain, oh, pray we had five for more whatever week. you want to. Yeah, we still had five more weeks of drought after that. Yeah, you know when the drought stopped? Oh, no. When they had the Texas Free Thought Convention. Oh, that's the right. last public appearance of Christopher Hitchens in an atheist conference. Oh, <laughs> poetic, That's when it started poetic justice. <laughs> yes, Reverend Copeland. Yes, you, you must have a $20 million mansion and a $20 million citation jet to go along with it. Yes! How fucking stupid are people? Why the hell do they still believe this? Why is it we have, we have very arrogant scholars with high degree educations in this and they believe in absolute bullshit, but they're very arrogant about it and so superior, you know? Very arrogant. Oh, fuck me. I mean, come on. I mean, why can you not show there's any truth to it? Oh, I've shown all kinds of it. No, you've shown, you've, you've shown all kinds of fallacies. That's what it is. Right? Subjective impressions, logical fallacies, frauds, falsehoods, fantasies. That's it. That's all you got. You don't have anything that actually indicates that what you're saying is true. And we have a hell of a lot that proves that it isn't. Oh, but I have a degree in philosophy. Fuck you. <laughs>
neither can anybody's interpretation of Scripture ever come up with anything that's consistent at all. Mm -hmm. But if God was real, they wouldn't need to. If God was real, we wouldn't have to have faith healers, or if we did have faith healers, they'd be working in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And they'd be regenerating lost limbs from amputees. They wouldn't be doing the kinds of things that they are. So, I mean, if, if, if God were real, there'd be many, many different ways of demonstrating that. And what would I do with that information? Depends on which version of God turns out to be real. Because it's the Bible God. The Yahweh Old yeah. Testament. Um, if it's the Old Testament Bible God, then I'm still hell bound. What are the biggest The number three. of people that we have on the planet right now requires that we be extremely efficient with our food production mm -hmm. and we are so not okay look at the way that we're fishing out everything china by itself is out fishing the pacific ocean by itself uh 20 some odd years ago i remember well, actually probably 30 years ago now i applied for a job and uh in, in Alaska for shipping canneries and everything. They were paying a ridiculous amount of money for people that would endure the, the weather up there. And you'd, you'd be up there for like three or four months, you'd come back with tens of thousands of dollars. And it was a good deal. But they start, they changed the laws on it because they realized they were having more and more fishing boats out every year. More and more fishing boats every year, yet they were bringing in collectively fewer fish. So every year they have more fishing boats than they had the year before, but every year those collectively are bringing in fewer fish. Now what's that tell you? The oceans cannot replenish as fast as we are consuming them. And the sad thing is, since we refuse to be efficient about anything, we're going to present ourselves with a problem because we are going to run out of food. We're going to run out of the ability to produce food. And we, are keep, we keep mass producing people. We're really good at that. And that's going to present a problem. Why is the Bible absolutely wrong about absolutely everything? Is because it was written by ignorant, bigoted, primitive, superstitious savages who obviously had no idea what they were talking about. That's why it just says that uh, if cattle mate while looking at a striped stick, they'll bear striped calves. Is that what we learned in, in genetics? No, of course not. The Bible is wrong about everything. Well, how could it be the divine word then? How could somebody who, how could the same being who devised DNA, if we want to take the, take that analogy, be the idiot incompetent who wrote the fucking scriptures no no I mean, it, what always get what well, i have more education than you i'm 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 schooled in philosophy well thank you why are you fucking wrong then <laughs> and then tell the exact, I see, I see your and then tell the exact same story twice where with 4, it, people yeah, with yeah it's this but it's still the same story and the followers are equally amazed mm -hmm. both times I didn't think he was going to do it a second time. I mean, well, 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 how, is that, how is it amazing the second time? You Any, saw him do it before. Anyone can feed 5,000 right? people once, but I mean, come you know, on. If Superman, if Superman flies down, says hello to you, and then takes off, you're going to be amazed, right? The first time you've ever seen it. He does it again on Thursday. Are you going to be amazed again? It, you know he can do this shit, right? I okay. mean, so if he does this three times, <clears throat> then I'll be. Does it take? Does it take God. a third time? To, oh well, you know what? He, 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 I guess he can do that. I saw him do it twice before. Why? This is a guy who wants to promote his his followers to be faith healers. He said, "You can do all the same. You can do better miracles than me if you just have the power of pretend. Mm -hmm. If you just make believe really hard. If you believe hard enough." then if you tell the mountain to jump into the sea, then it'll jump into the sea. Because it's all make-believe. It's all pretend. It's all the power of positive thought. Right? That's, that's all it is. And so we have a guy who, who doesn't know when figs are in season, so he curses the tree because it didn't provide figs when it was out of season. You know, big fucking deal there. Right? So this, this is a guy who says that it doesn't matter what you take into your mouth. Go ahead and drink poisonous things. You know, dance around with snakes. Drink Drano. Whatever. It doesn't matter. What, take, what you take into your mouth, that's not what defiles you. It's the magic words that come out of your mouth. I'm, I'm going to go check can, under the sink right now. I've been, that I've can been... cause curses, right? That, that, that can defile you. That's what this guy thinks. He believes in magic words and he believes in fucking demons. He doesn't obviously know anything about you know, nutrition or, or intoxication or drugs or, or poisons or you know, fucking broken glass, you know, whatever. He doesn't, he doesn't understand any of that. Or he's germ theory. Or germ theory of or disease. Theory. Thank you. Because how long did we have to wait for germs? Wouldn't it be great if the Bible actually told us something useful? 
It's, it's funny you bring up germ theory because that's actually going to be the Because, I mean, Jesus one. says don't wash your hands, right? This is why it doesn't matter what goes into your mouth. You don't. He's defying the, the, the Jewish law by saying don't wash your hands. And, and the Christians will come to me and say, well, you know, we obviously had divine inspiration because it says, it says in the Old Testament to wash your hands. Well, then why did Jesus say not to wash your hands? Why is Jesus defying the, the, the wisdom of fucking raccoons? <laughs> You know, they figured this out, right? They didn't need divine wisdom, and Jesus is saying not to do that. So here we've got a guy who has absolutely no idea about science whatsoever. No, he's not fucking God. This is a big argument that I have with everybody. You know, Jesus is God. If Jesus is a manifestation of God, Jesus is God made flesh. If you're playing a video game, you have it. Let's say you're playing like a Warcraft or something like that. You know, you have a character in that game, and that character is you. That character knows everything you know because you know it, and that is you, right? But you, while that character is you, you are not that character because you exist in a world outside of that world, right? You existed before his time. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I mean, so, so Jesus would be the avatar of God. So it would not be possible for Jesus to say that God knows things that I don't know. And that you know, when God then comes down as a third person and says, This is my son in whom I am very proud. And the Jews are all, oh, look, a cloud is talking to us. Great. And they're, they're talking about this hippie over here, and then the hippie has to be led off by some other, the great ghost, or whatever the fuck, right, who, who, who is also Jesus, but Jesus doesn't know where Jesus is leading him to. None of that makes any sense. It's because it's a rip-off of the Trimurti in order to, to, to reconcile a contradiction between the very first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, and Jesus saying that the only way to God is through me. So thou shalt have no other gods, oh, except this guy. Right? So there's, al already we have a blasphemous heresy right there. Reconciliation, Trinity, which is ripped off of the Hindu Trimurti, where we have three different people, and they are different people with different wives and everything, but they're all part of the same Godhead. Let's look at Leviticus and the medical advice that that gives. Right? How do, how do we cure mold? Burn the house down. That's a great. That's that's it. Then there that is works. A, yeah. And so, uh, how do we cure scabies or leprosy? Depending on is it scabies? Is it leprosy? Burn I'm pretty the sure though. There's a. They're, they're, those are violently different, but they're different interpretations. One interpretation says that here that the Bible is talking about scabies, and another interpretation it says it's talking about leprosy. I think scabies being a small bug that crawls into you, and leprosy being you being, you know, a a, a viral thing. I think it is then the, these are going to be different kinds of maladies with different kinds of cures. But in either case, the way Leviticus says to cure it is with an elemental spell using all five elements on the, on the witch's pentacle. Oh. Right? But, you need to, but you need to be level five before you get your elemental spells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a witch's pentacle, it comes to five points, and they, are, they all represent different elements because it was once believed you know, that fire was an element, water is an element, earth is an element, you know, so forth. And then you get into, and wind, and life. And heart. Right. Well, Captain Planet. Life is the fifth <laughs> element. A lot of people will think that it's some hot chick with orange hair, but, you know, it, it's actually life. So fire. You, you have the five elements in this, in this elemental spell in Leviticus where you have to have a, a bird that you, you dip a wooden wand and an earthen bowl under running water, and then you're supposed to... You have to kill the bird and drip the blood into the, and then you, you use the wand to sprinkle blood all over the house because somehow that will cure scabies. And then you have to sprinkle the blood onto a living bird that you then release into a field and that in, it somehow invokes the element of air because the bird flies and that's the spell that cures scabies. Oh, by the way, as a side effect, you know, you also have to shave all your hair and, and, and w burn all your clothes and sit naked for a week. You know, which, by the way, is an extreme cure, but will cure scale, <laughs> or at least lice. <laughs>